during your time here in LA while you were playing college basketball at UCLA mm -hmm. and you were a freshman on campus in 1998 but long talk time to us ago. <laughs> it's a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about your time there, but more specifically, a few years later or before Kobe gets drafted yeah. uh, in 1996 by the Lakers. And I know he would work yeah. out mm -hmm. uh, up at the, the John Wooden Center and yeah. just talk about seeing him coming in during the summer, getting his work in and just your experience at UCLA. It was dope. This is pre-cell phones, man. I'm dating y'all. Like I never had a pager. That's how you used to have to get you have to page us on campus, but I didn't have a pager, so I was I was in the wind. Uh, but UCLA <laughs> was a blast, man. So Baron Davis's class was right before mine. They came in as a number one recruiting class, and then we came in right after with someone named Jerron Rush. If you don't mm. know him, he was mm -hmm. cold, PG. Kind of a, you're more skilled, but like you, six seven does everything, a monster. Brandon Rush, uh, big brother, right? Yeah, Brandon's yeah. big brother. Could have been, should have been a perennial all-star, man. But we had Ray Young. We had the number one recruiting class back-to-back -back years, so I came to UCLA, and it was just popping. My first year at UCLA was an NBA lockout. So we had everyone coming to our game, Shaq, Kobe, they would stop the game when these people, this is Westwood, I'm coming from Sacramento, like this is what LA is like. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to Hollywood parties and all the, like the screen, like it was, it was like being in the pros, you know, mm -hmm. without the money, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like we got a little bit, but it wasn't pro money, but it was, the life was great. But being able to fast forward to cross and pass with Kobe because, you know, it's well documented, like him and Shaq kind of at the beginning, it was, you know, s s some whatever type energy. So Kobe was kind of alone or off to himself because he was always on our campus, mm -hmm. eating, working out, <laughs> sometimes just sitting down. Um, I remember he used to come in and, and, and go into uh, the poly after we had practiced. I remember the one year, I don't remember the year it was, but he had a, a cast on his wrist and he was doing workouts left handed. I'm just like, this dude is nuts. But mm -hmm. he, he hadn't, he kind of just st started taking off, but he was still in there being Kobe. So just... From the jump, I was just a fan. I'm just like, this dude is cold. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know if I'm gonna make it if this is what <laughs> if this is what the league is, you know what I mean? <laughs> so just seeing a young him at night, you know, nineteen years old was 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 dope just to kind of see his work ethic and how hard he worked at that young age, because he's only two years older than me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it's just like, yo, that was definitely the bar. So it was just a lot of admiration uh from the beginning. Was there was the cause we know about the uh, you know, the Rico high runs mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Was there, those runs were going on yeah, I'll definitely, way before uh, then? A guy named um, Adam, but then most of the time Magic used to run him and Magic was dirty out there. You could never be, we had a, we had him on a live Stacking show with team, all the smoke. Huh? No, it wasn't, he was coming with his own players, but he would just call bullshit the whole okay. time and it was Magic. Yeah, so you right, couldn't, right. it would be point game, uh, you know, we're on defense, it's, Magic doesn't have the ball, like someone's guarding you, you're on Magic's team and he'll call the foul four, even if we, you know, yeah. and I'll bring that back down here, young <laughs> yeah, fellas. Yeah, like yeah. we get the rebound, they miss a shot and you call the foul, it was, it was, it's legendary. Paul Pierce got on our uh, podcast one time and told stories how Magic just completely magic the runs up. Yeah. But uh, we had <laughs> those runs, runs and uh, it was dope. You know, when I'm first, I'm, I think I've just turned 18. So we're in there with Kobe and Paul Pierce and Shaq. I mean, those runs from the jump were legendary. I was a kid like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, So to me, I credit that with me kind of getting the mentality and the dog to understand what it took to play on that level. Mm. I credit the men's gym for, you know, for our crew that made it to the league. Like it was the men's gym because we always played as a UCLA unit. Sometimes we get hot, some days we get our ass kicked every day, mm -hmm. but we got to bump with these real pros and all-stars as teenagers. Mm -hmm. Man. Mm -hmm. Shout out uh, Rico Hines. That's my dog, for yeah. what he's doing he now. He brought it back. Yeah, for, he brought for it back. I mean, cause you know, everybody knows you want to get some runs in the summer. LA, yeah. There's only yeah. one spot to go and that's LA. Yeah, Rico runs, baby. I do want to talk about, you know, I didn't I didn't know y'all necessarily played together at UCLA. Y'all was there at the same mm -hmm. time, but mm. the relationship before was a little rocky. With Rico? Yeah, with uh, Rico. Oh, y'all heard about yeah, this, Yeah, we huh? heard about that. We heard about that. So Rico, <laughs> so Rico used to pick on me, bro. Yeah. Because I used, it, it, funny as it is, like, like I almost had to like turn my thug up because I came like light skin, good hair, like, oh, what's this dude? Like people used to try me. Mm -hmm. Rico used to steal my brush in the locker room and kind of bully me. And we got to, he's one year older, he's one year ahead of me in grades, but like two years older than me or three years older than me. Mm -hmm. So my sophomore year, I think, or it's either my junior year, I just got tired of it. And uh, we were playing pickup and I knew I was gonna be the starting three and he was talking shit like he was gonna be the starting three and it was going back and forth and I was getting the better of him. And next thing you know, he swung and missed and it was on. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, if you were there, you know what happened. I got down on bro and uh, I walked away <laughs> and uh, 
pause. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now you young motherfuckers be, you know, and then something got thrown and hit me and then we locked back up. But oddly enough, through that situation, like, bro, we became best friends. Mm -hmm. Like before, I, I guess he was just kind of checking my temperature and I let him know I wasn't, you know, really with it. And we locked up, squashed it. And, and to this day, I call him one of my closest friends. So a uh, great dude, uh, you know, know his mom, his sister was in his wedding. Like that's my dog mm -hmm. now, but it came from locking up. Locking oh, up. That's yeah. honestly the best. That's life. Yeah, yeah. yeah honestly, you know? the best. You know, yeah. that's kind of like how a bomb is right. a bomb is forged Hell, yeah. is through those that's how we those tough times. <laughs> who, who I, I had to whoop his ass. ass. <laughs> I had to whoop his ass, ass one out. time. <laughs> 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 oh man, I want to go back to you know those runs uh, in the in the '90s and early 2000s, yeah. right? Um, Master P was also yeah. up there at these times. He Talk to, to try, us a little he bit used about to try to bully me too. Yeah, I, I we I heard the story of that of y'all two getting into it. Yeah, man. hey, I, I'm trying to tell you, Pete. I used to try me because I was light skinned, <laughs> yeah. and this is like only one tattoo. So they're just like, who's one this light skinned tattoo. dude? One tattoo. I'm just like. <laughs> And it hurt my, it broke my heart because like I was listening to Master P heavy like my senior year, like 11th grade, 12th grade mm -hmm. year. So I'm calling back the home. It's like, you'll never guess who's up here. Master P, and I seen Silk and Woo Woo. And I'm just like, yo, no limit is up here. Next thing I know, Master P's trying to bully me. So I'm kind of <laughs> letting it slide at first until I had to like, bro, I'm not playing these games. Like we, right. you know what I mean? And he was fiery and I was fiery. People didn't really know, but I was fiery too. So I wouldn't say it almost came to blows, but it was just like, bro, I'm not playing none of that shit. So we could hoop or we could do whatever. Right. And I think it kind of, and, and to this day, him, him and I are cool. Like we talk about Mercy and getting my twins and working out with his kids and we see each other at games, but I just got tested early. Yeah. You know what I mean? People wanted to see what, you know, check my temperature and, 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 and that carried on into the league until I just had to keep letting people know like this is, so they finally kind of realized like, okay, I think he's, he's about what he says and, 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 and let's let, let, let's let, let it be what it is. Yeah. <laughs> how, how did, uh, I'm, I'm curious on like the background of those runs and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but during your time, were you guys playing in the same gym as they were? Wasn't there another, th there was three gyms that they had. <sighs> No, it's, it's it's really been the men's gym. Sometimes we'd play in the wooden center if if the if 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 that was occupied. But okay. it was really the gym that Kareem played in. Got it. You know, a uh, uh, coach wooden coached in. Mm. You know what I mean? It's just a historical gym. It's you know you walk up the stairs, it's old, and it kind of just has that mystique yep. to it. We're actually trying to do a documentary on that right now. I've got a group of people we finally locked in with UCLA. So you know we're we're trying to see if we can put this together. Yeah. You got to think, but there just wasn't much film back then. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were there, you were there. Mm -hmm. If you saw story. Shaq tearing that motherfucking backboard down or Kobe going to work against Paul, like you, you were there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's just like to to be able to bring that back to life and have these guys talk about those runs. Um, they were incredible. I mean, people fought like it was serious. This this wasn't no. These were just as competitive as real games, although it's summertime because it's just it, it was I felt like it was one of the first times that all the stars were in the same spot. So mm -hmm. no one was trying to get shown up by anybody. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting I'm 18 like, oh, shit. Yo, yo, UCLA, y'all up. I'm like, oh, OK, who am I? Going? You know what I mean? So yeah. it's just like I was a fanboy, But in the same moment, I got thrown in the fire and got, you know, got cleaned out one time by Shaq. And uh, like I, it hurt, but I thought it was cool. Like Shaq just fucked me up. OK, let's go. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just it was such a great learning experience while I was a teenager. Yeah. I think I think it is like it, it's a bucket list destination spot that you have yeah. to go if you're a yeah. fan of the culture, a fan yeah. of basketball. Yeah, you got to get there early. It's the best of the best. <laughs> and you got to get and it's carried on to to, to your guys' time. Yeah. And you know, Bron's been like everyone's been there mm -hmm. at some point. KD, you like everyone's been there and played, and it, it, it's just dope. Like I said, if those walls can talk, they would tell mm -hmm. some crazy right. stories. Right. I don't think so. To be honest with you. I, I think because, you know, like, I feel like it's shifted. Like when I first, I, you got to think my first year in the league was 02, 03. You know what I mean? So it wasn't, LA wasn't really popping for a basketball scene. You know what I mean? It was more New York, Miami. And then all of a sudden the, it shifted and everyone started coming to LA. And that's mm -hmm. when that shit really picked up. I mean, there were there were runs there with local LA, but this is what like the, everyone started coming to LA for the summer. You know what I mean? Because it was just, it was popping. You know, mm -hmm. early 2000s, women, rims, the, the vibe of LA, the energy was different. So everyone was here in the summertime and that's when that shit really started picking up. So I, I wouldn't say that people avoided it. I mean, there's some people got embarrassed and some people got beat up, but I don't think anybody ran from it. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, I say that as well. I mean, obviously you have know more mm -hmm. of it than I have, but I mean, it, it might be dudes that show up 
a day before just to be like, oh, okay, this is what it's about. Mm-hmm. The next day they suit it up. Go. I gotta get, I it's gotta be a part go. of this. You yeah. wanna come check it out? Yeah, for real. <laughs> nah, it, it is, and, and I feel like nobody misses at that motherfucker. Like, no, nah, it's crazy. Everybody is locked yeah, in. You might, you might get your ass bust, but mm-hmm. everybody be locked in. And there's three courts, and you stay on the loser court two or three times, two or three games in a row, and no one's watching your game, and the, the competition level goes Last down. Time, and it's like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta stay on the number one of the number two court. Right. That third court's a, don't mess with that. <laughs> <laughs> Football free agency might already have you hyped for next season, but while kickoff is a long ways out, you can pick more or less on 2024 season stats on price picks. Season totals for passing yards, receiving touchdowns, sacks, you name it, we got it. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 with basketball, hockey, and college basketball. Entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports set. Prize Picks offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, Prize Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. Download the app today and use code PODCASTP for a first deposit match up to $100. I want to make sure y'all heard me now. Use code PODCASTP for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more. Pick less. It's that easy. I ain't sending no more. Pick more. Pick less. I ain't sending no less. Pick more. Pick. That's it. 